It don't take long for parents to figure out just how much their kids love sweets. And honestly, there's very little a parent can do to curb the almost insatiable appetite the kids have for it. But why? Why do Butterfingers give kids that rush and not Brussels sprouts? How do their tongues and brains even know the difference? Is there anything parents can do to get their kids to love veggies as much as candy? In this brain snack, we'll explore the neurological underpinnings of taste and see why kids and adults love sweets so much. Taste begins in the mouth. As one of the five commonly known senses, it's referred to as a chemical sense because your perception of it depends on chemistry. Chemicals like sucrose, sodium chloride, and triglycerides bind to the taste receptors of a taste bud. And just like your car key can only unlock one door, one type of molecule can only unlock one type of taste receptor. Now with all of the tasty foods out here, you would think that we would have many different types of taste receptors, but it turns out we only have four. And five if you fancy. Sweet, sour, bitter, salt, and you mommy are the only types of taste receptors found on our tongues. Now, taste receptor cells convert the chemical information in salt, sugar, and sulfur into electrical information, which is the language the brain speaks. When this happens, neurotransmitters are released, which excite your taste neurons, also known as gustatory neurons, that run all the way from your tongue to the medulla of your brainstem. This interaction helps you salivate, swallow, and move your tongue properly during feeding. The next step in your brains is the pons. The pons is like a relay station or a gossip queen that's gonna spill this neurological tea with the rest of your brain, in particular with your hypothalamus, which controls your motivation to keep eating, as well as your limbic cortex, which is where we experience the pleasure from the things we taste. As you can imagine, this region lights up like firecrackers whenever a kid eats Halloween candy or an Oreo cheesecake from Burger King. In fact, this region lights up when people just see an Oreo cheesecake or whatever sweet they like. This electrical interaction causes the brain to release endogenous opiates. Yes, opiates, which are natural morphine-like chemicals that induce a sense of calm and pleasure in the brain. This is the main reason why sweets can be so addicting. The bitter and sulfuric taste of vegetables simply do not activate this response, at least not to the same degree. So we'll therefore never make kids as cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs as they are for sweets. So parents trying to get their kids to love spinach as much as Skittles are battling millions of years of evolution of one of the oldest regions of our brains. Good luck. Now signals from the medulla are also sent to the thalamus, yet another relay station that's gonna pass this information to various regions of your cerebral cortex. This is where you consciously become aware that you're tasting something and where you integrate information about the texture, the smell, and the taste of the food. So in sum, trying to get kids to love carrots as much as candy, water as much as juice, kale as much as Kit Kats, it's like playing darts with spaghetti. It's just not gonna happen, it's not gonna work. Their brains, and yours have simply evolved to relish the taste of sweets. There's not much that we can do about it. The good news is that you can shape their taste preferences, especially early on in life, and increase the chances that they'll like or at least tolerate vegetables. You can find out how to do that in this brain snack. If you found anything useful or interesting in this video, if you learned something, comment below and let me know what it is. If you think someone else will find it useful, share your Halloween candy and your snacks with them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at snack time.